another one fell through the cracks and ended up in the hand of a reviewer that don't know Jack. It is what it is. Once again, another genie is out of the bottle, and I guess we're going to now talk about it since the rest of the world has seen it. And uh, let's break it down. So, Transformers Rise of the Beast Battle Changers. Um, here's a little more information that wasn't available, once again, in the review mentioned. Um, so this is the Transformers Battle Changers Off-Road Bumblebee. Uh, Hasbro product code F4607. The MSRP that is going to be available for these Battle Changers is $10.99, according to the Walmart listings. And these are essentially going to be the best way to put it, something of a core class price point. These are, in the initial wave of Wave 1, going to be shipping out April 1st. That's what they say. So keep that in mind that in literally a couple of days as of this recording, they probably will be hitting your stores at that price point. And available in that case assortment will be Battle Changer, uh, Bumblebee, Battle Changer, Bumblebee Off-Road. So there's two Bumblebees, keep that in mind. Battle Changer, Rhinox, and Battle Changer, Mirage. Now, this core price point essentially doesn't have much of a gimmick. It's just a core class. Um, in the case of the Bumblebee that we have here, the Off-Road one that we're discussing specifically, uh, we'll just have a flip-out kind of buster hand like he's always had throughout the years, his little arm cannon and that is that. So this is the off-road version. This is the one that we've seen uh, through multiple different kinds of recordings of the movie when it was being filmed from the Secret Valley of the Incas. Uh, I believe we saw that last year around, I want to say, November. Uh, this was after the Montreal recordings were concluded, and the Montreal recordings were supposed to represent New York City in the 90s. So this is now the off-road stuff. Keep in mind, like I said before, a lot of these characters are going to have um, different body types. So when you see multiple listings of certain characters, it doesn't necessarily represent the same uh, alt mode or design. Second thing I want to also mention is that all of these are also from the Rise of the Beast toy line itself. There's going to be two Rise of the Beast toy line initiatives, the actual main line and then what is going to appear in studio series. There's probably going to also be masterpiece stuff down the line. It's pretty much a given at this point. But at the time being, we pretty much just have main line Rise of the Beast and studio series. And the main line stuff, keep in mind, is going to be aimed at a younger demographic. Uh, the reviewer seems to be parroting my vernacular and lingo now because he's trying to... Uh, up his game and not seem like he doesn't know what he's talking about, but a spade is a spade at the end of the day, and he belongs in the dirt. But that being said, ooh, Proto, you're, you're really firing. Yeah, but you know what? I, I, I don't like when I see these images privately, you know, three, four weeks ago, the battle changers, the, the power combiners, the power alliance, all of this stuff, I saw factory photos, but it was all kept privately, among different developers and distributors and stuff like that. None of that is public. I hate when that stuff gets stolen and then it's used in this kind of way. But you can't stop these guys. Only your fists can. And unfortunately, these guys are always above and beyond, far away from my fingers on the other side of the ocean. But that's a whole other story. Point being is we have here this off-road bumblebee. And this off-road bumblebee is going to be part of that lower price point, and this whole line itself is going to be something very similar to that of the Bumblebee movie. If you kind of just spread out everything that we had of the Bumblebee movie, it was all gimmick-based, it was all simplistic, it was all low-cost in terms of engineering, paint, and plastic, because it's aimed at a younger demo. The nicer stuff that will be representative of what is in the movie, wait for Studio Series. There's going to be a Studio Series off-road Bumblebee. There's going to be a Studio Series regular Bumblebee. There's going to be a Studio Series of all of that kind of stuff. It's all going to be a given. So keep that in mind. People have been kind of looking at this stuff and being, oh my God, it's kind of ugly or it's harsh or it's kind of bulky. It's the best that they could do to represent what is on the screen 
in plastic form within the budget constraints of a 1099 price point. Literally taking something like imagine if you took, I don't know, I'm trying to think of uh, an, a complex design. Take something like, um, you know, Sentinel Prime, if you will. That was a very complicated leader class Dark of the Moon toy. And then he also had his, and I use air quotes here, Cyberverse version, which was his Legends class. So many different price point names and trademarks. But he had a Cyberverse price point back in Dark of the Moon, which was a Legends class. And how they simplified it. Used thinner plastic, um, you know, just kind of kept it all as simple as they could, as opposed to the much more complex Leader Class 1. The Leader Class 1 is a, a proper representation of the animation model, and the Cyberverse slash Legends Class 1 from Dark of the Moon is what it is. <laughs> it's still fine. It works with, it, with the, the arc and that fun little price point with all the play sets and everything. So this is a representation of that. So, you know, people are looking at it going, wow, look at this bulky DeLorean almost looking kind of bumblebee. I know it does kind of look like a DeLorean. Eh? Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really just uh, an interpretation of what the animation model is as best they could within those price points. So keep that in mind. There's going to be more of these probably popping up. Now that this is showing up uh, in the hands of the CD, that means that probably the rest of these assortments are going to be showing up at some point. Um, again, Power Alliance, uh, the Battle Changers, the Power Combiners, and the Power Battlers, along with the Beast Mode Bumblebee and a lot of other product that is right now leaving Vietnam, is going to Quebec to be packaged as we speak, um, and then will be shipped out in the West to all the different stores and distributors within, I want to say, the next 48 hours. So keep that in mind. And uh, check it out if you are interested. We are getting a lot of this product ridiculously early because of the big V, and the movie has been pushed back a year later. But it is what it is, like I always say. And uh, hopefully this all turns out for the best. And uh, just hope people aren't kind of bored with it by the time the actually the movie comes out and the product lingers. And I mean, we've seen this already with the G.I. Joe Retaliation movie where the product came out way too early before the movie did. And that, that made the product kind of tank and end up on clearance before the movie even hit theaters. Tron was another good example of that. Remember the Tron Legacy movie back in, when was that, 2011, 2012? Same thing, the product came out way too early and the movie got pushed back. And so as a result, by the time the movie hit theaters, all the product was already on liquidation and clearance. So I just hope this doesn't happen to Rise of the Beast. I hope there still is going to be a keen interest for it. But unfortunately... In the Transformer world, toys are what move the needle. Uh, it's not like all the other stuff like Star Wars and everything that where it's more of a supplement. Transformers toys really is the bread and butter of the brand. So I hope that this works out great. And I hope you guys enjoyed what you heard today and uh, learned a little something. And we'll talk again really soon.